Good morning. Welcome to the fourth Sunday of Lent. And uh, I have some announcements for you this morning. Uh, first, we, again, we will, this morning we will have an inside and outside worship service with Holy Communion at 9.30. It seems to be working pretty well. Um, we have anywhere from, I guess, an average about 30-some people here inside and probably about 15 people outside. So uh, there's more space. Um, things are working out real well with that. We also, uh, during uh, Lent, have a Bible study that is at 7 o'clock on Wednesday nights called Amidst Your Neighbors. If you come and join us, we will be talking about, you know, how do we deal with people of different cultures and different color. Um, in addition, if you can't make it on Wednesday night, I really encourage everybody to see the videos. Um, the, the last one was oh, 15, 16 minutes long. Um, you know, they, I try to keep them a little short, but it, it, it ties everything together, I think, a little bit. So uh, take a look at that if you can. I think it's a place we all need to be to be able to uh, be able to talk about and even to think about um, the, the issues of uh, certainly dealing with people of different color and, and culture in our world and just kind of thinking it through a little bit um, and seeing where that goes. Um, also, um, I, I want to tell you, you probably received an announcement on Thursday. Um, we, uh, on February 28th, we had someone that was in a congregation who um, was, had contracted COVID and uh, got sick on Friday, uh, the Friday that, uh, that was after that, and was tested. And Sunday afternoon, of course, the next Sunday afternoon, March 7th, uh, informed us as soon as she knew uh, that she had COVID. So we had contacted everybody that was in the service via email and in some cases by phone um, and uh, just wanted to monitor it as best we could and at least let them know what the situation was. Um, by Thursday, being 12 days since the initial event happened, uh, we have not heard from anyone saying that they were sick or that they contracted the virus. So either, you know, her contagious time was not consistent with Sunday morning or and or all the procedures and precautions that, that we had worked, um, which is really good news. So um, this was a good, I'd like to say, test, if you will, or a good, um, uh, you know, uh, just to see what the outcome and how good we are or how we can be able to keep the virus from spreading. So apparently everything worked the way it should. So thank you to church council who's done, I know we've had many discussions and Randy Vaness who's, who's put together all the different things that we need to do. Um, in this case, um, no one else was contracted, contracted the illness and I, that, I see that as a success for us um, and encouragement um, certainly as we move forward um, with actually less and less cases that are out there. So we're take, we're keep, we continue to monitor the COVID um, situation um, even as it improves. So um, that's great. I think that's really great news. Also, um, just to keep in front of us our prayer concerns, um, as we go on, certainly with the video um, between now and uh, Easter, um, we're going to be recording earlier. So we might not have the up-to-date prayer concerns um, in the prayers, but I will uh, include them in my announcement so that we kind of get the flavor of having them in our worship service. So uh, please keep read Michael Bollinger in your prayers, uh, Robert Boyd and his family at his passing, uh, Carl Gerber, Fred uh, Geyser, um, Bill Hendricks and his family at his passing, William Kearns and his family at his passing, George Martell, Albert Poor and his family at his passing, Rita Sims, Kathy White, and our Holy Trinity COVID case. May they all be blessed with God's comfort and love. Amen. With that, let us begin our worship with the order of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and one another. Gracious God, we acknowledge that we sin and confess our sins, those known to us that are a burden our hearts 
and those unknown to us, but seen by you. We know that before you nothing remains hidden, and in you everything is revealed. Free us from the slavery of sin, liberate us from the bondage of guilt, work in us that which is pleasing in your sight, for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins, through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you into eternal life. Amen. with you. Let us pray. O oh God, rich in mercy, by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up the fallen world and rescued us from the helplessness, hopelessness of death. Lead us into your light, that all our deeds may reflect your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ephesians, the second chapter, verses 1 to 10. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of the world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. Psalm 107, verses 1 to 3, 17 to 22. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good, for God's mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord proclaim that God redeemed them from the hand of the foe, gathering them in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some were fools and took rebellious paths. Through their sins they were afflicted. They loathed all manner of food and drew near to death's door. Then in their trouble they cried to the Lord, and you delivered them from their distress. You sent for your word and healed them and rescued them from the grave. Let them give thanks to you, Lord, for your steadfast love and your wonderful works for all people. Let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and tell of your deeds with shouts of joy. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, 
so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believed in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe in him are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world and the people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who did evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so it may be clearly seen, and their deeds have been done in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hi, boys and girls. Today, it's like one of the coolest readings. We talk about John 3.16. And I want to tell you that um, John 3.16 is that God so loved the world that he sent his son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have eternal life. I mean, almost everybody can say it because they know it. It's just so important to us. We just hear it all the time and we're able to say it. But it's not the verse that's so important, but it's the promise in 316 that is so important. And I want to tell you, I think of it all the time. And I want to show you how I think of it. <laughs> what time is that? 316, ding, oh. For God so loved the world that he sent his only son. Whoever believed in it will not perish but have eternal life. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. I look at my cell phone and gosh, I wonder what time it is. Voila. Oh, you might not be able to see it. All right, I'll get that fixed on the screen. It says 316. I look at this and go, ah, for God so loved the world that he sent his only son that whoever believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. It's like everywhere. And then I'm, I kind of like tools. Do you like tools? I love to do tools and hand things. I have what's known as a ratchet set. See all these things? And you have all these different ratchets that are different sizes. See them there? They're all like different sizes. Let's see if we can get one. Um, this looks like a good one. Yep, yeah, it's, it's a little small one. And we'll put it on a screwdriver just because it's kind of small. And we can turn certain things, you know, like fix screws and stuff like that. It's kind of cool. I wonder what size it is. It is 3 sixteenths of an inch. Boom, boom, boom. For God so loved the world that he sent his only son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Things are all around. Every time I see 3 sixteen, that's exactly what I think of. When you went to a baseball game or went to a game, there used to be a guy with this fuzzy hair, and he, he would have a sign that said, 316, blah, there it is, 316, for God so loved the world that, that he gave his only son, whoever believed in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Here's a picture of him. I hope I get a picture of him. Here's a picture of him. And then I'll tell you another story. I was working in a project, um, like a Habitat for Humanity project with kids, and an issue came up and we had to work through the issue. You know, sometimes things aren't always all that good. And a guy at the end of the week that was in charge came up to me and he gave me a little washer. Big deal, right? Little washer. It's on my keychain. He said, put this on your keychain. See? Oh, you can see that. There's a little washer there that's on my keychain. And I said, what do I want the washer on my keychain for? And he said, that washer is the size 3 16th of an inch. Really? So God so loved the world that he gave his only son whoever had believed in him will have life and will not perish. Everything to remind me every day, every time I get out my keys, that God so loved the world. So there's constant reminders. It's so cool to always have a reminder. So every time you see 3 16, you're reminded of what God does. So for, for something for your parents, next chance you get, like right on, on a piece of paper, 316, put it up on the refrigerator and see if they tell you, hey, who put this 316 here? Because God so loved the world that whoever believed in him would not perish, but have eternal life. Ta-da. So that's today. We're talking about 316, that we all understand 
the great gift that God has given to us. So let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank, thank you for coming. Thank you for saving us. And thank you for giving us your grace and your love so that we can have it and know and, and, and just have a better life and be able to share that love with others. These things we ask in your name. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, it all comes down to this. It all comes down to what you have done for us. And help us to see that, to understand that, to appreciate that, and to accept that and believe that. Because that is the most important thing, that it isn't about us. It's about the grace and love that you give to us. So that we can be free to love you based on what you've done, not based on you know, what we're going to get out of it. So bless us this morning as we continue to learn and reinforce the idea of your grace and love. This we ask in your name. Amen. The story that this reading begins with is uh, the story that happened in the desert was Moses was uh, part of the Jewish tradition that everybody knew. This story was part of that tradition. Uh, the people were struggling um, as they came from the exile in Egypt, as they cr moved across the desert, they had trouble getting food, they had trouble getting water. Uh, you can imagine living in, in the hot desert, swelling desert all that time, that it was not really a cool place to be. So, you know, it's not, you know, it's, it's not hard to think about them and being, um, you know, getting grumpy and starting to complain and, you know, say stuff like, why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Everything was so cool in Egypt. We, we had food, we had beer, we had everything that we needed. Just like that. Why did you bring us out here? So the Lord didn't like their complaining. So he brought on poisonous serpents and they bit the people and some of them died. So the people realized that this, these two events were related. So they, they repented about from their grumbling and asked Moses to have God remove the snakes. Okay, God wins. Get rid of the snakes. And the Lord instructed Moses to put a serpent on a pole and hold it up, and those that saw it would not die, even if they were bit. So Jesus uses this example of the serpent on the pole to talk about himself. The people who are sinful just need to see the serpent on the pole, and they will live. Jesus is telling the people around him that all they need to do is to believe when Jesus is lifted up, implying that he would have the same kind of spiritual power like the serpent on the pole, for all of them who have believed. And Jesus is saying that God has had enough of anger and retribution. The New Deal will be like that snake on the pole. All you need to do is see it, believe it, and you will live. John 3.17, I know we focus on John 3.16 all the time, but one of my favorite verses is John 17, states, Jesus is not coming into this world to condemn the world. He is here to save it. God is not going to punish the Jewish people again. He is bringing a way that they can be saved in a way they can do, a way that is not based on a count and mouse game of you know, merit and punishment. As an example, I had a friend who moved into our area and started a new job. He bought a house, he had two kids. They were good, faithful, faith-filled people. The future really was theirs. The past wasn't, well, the greatest. He had some problems at work and there were those that didn't like him for whatever reason. Um, and he was able to get away from all that and start a new, fresh life in a new place. Things were going good for his work and his life. He had seemed to find his niche and seemingly was successful. The family was easily integrated into the community. All was good. And then, a little while later, the cracks began to show this issue emerged at work. Perhaps he could have handled it better. Then another issue emerged. And before you know it, he was on the defensive about everything. He began to work harder. He could work himself, he believed, out of his situation, which made him a wreck. 
but he kept going and was able to keep some semblance of equilibrium. There was a groundswelling of people that didn't particularly like him at all, but somehow he was still surviving. And then his situation at work completely broke. There was a hearing on whether he should keep his job, and that wasn't going so well either. So he had resistance from people who didn't like him. He couldn't work his way out of his problem. So he probably was gonna lose his job. This real estate market had taken a turn on him, so his house was underwater, and he couldn't move either. He was locked in. So it all was just one big, sheer mess. I don't know how he did it. He would be unemployed, with a negative net worth, and people in his neighborhood that didn't like him. He was about as outcast as anyone could possibly be. Everything and everyone was against him. You can imagine the hope he would have, you know, in this world. But can you imagine if all his enemies also included God as well? He would be an outcast in this life and an outcast in the next. He would be so deep in trouble that there would be nothing but a whole lot of torture, living and dead. It would have been better for him not to have been born. But God didn't send Jesus to add new laws or layers of condemnation. He sent him that, so, that no matter what, through faith we have hope. My goodness gracious, that is so important. It would completely mess up our lives and our relationship and still have hope. We have hope not in what we did. There is no hope there, but hope in what Jesus did for us. Indeed, as John 3, 17 says, Indeed, God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through it. God forgave the grumbling in the desert. God forgave the people who crucified Jesus. And God forgives my friend and God forgives us for no other reason than, he, than the love he has for his creation. God recognizes his kingdom would be a pretty lonely place if its occupants were the ones who were good enough to be there. He realizes and he shows us that to love is enough. That desire, the faith in which Jesus says and did gives us hope in the love of Christ that was shared for all of us. That is called grace. I don't know, but as I get older, I see the truth being manipulated. I see so many reasons to lose faith at the unanswered questions of tragedies that happen in our world. And I see so many hurtful and selfish things. Maybe I'm just more aware. I begin to doubt. How can there be anything different from this mess? This mess is all I see. But I come around to faith being not knowledge, but just that, faith. And faith is trusting something that we can't fully see. We don't know what the, what factual, with factual certainty, but what we do know, there is nothing else like it. Without Jesus, there is nowhere to go. The bad wins, the hatred grows, the fate of our lives, is dependent on us. We better make the most of it because we only have one chance and it's always fleeting away. Faith gives us the hope in John 3.16. Faith gives us the possibility of new life as nothing else does. How can we not have faith? It is all that matters. So today think of John 3.16 as the God's gift to you. It is. It is a hope and something that the world can absolutely cannot give. It is a hope of something that turns the tables on the world and opens the world, opens the door into the next. It is so powerful. It is so important. How in the world 
Can we live without it? Amen. Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. During this Lenten pilgrimage, may we turn toward our Savior and walk with him, listening to his word, learning from his example, and living in his grace and love. May we take the time to reflect on the direction of our lives and our discipleship in him. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Bless your whole church, Catholic, Protestant, and non-denominational churches. Help us all to share the good news of your love and grace among ourselves and with others. Help us all to be a positive influence of unconditional love for all people. Bless our church, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, and our church, Holy Trinity Lutheran Church here in Leesburg, so that people see your presence among us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Give us your strength and resolve to overcome the fluctuations of the virus that has spread around the world. Help us all work together to reduce fatalities, reduce the spread, and maintain our sanity during this time of struggle. Also be with those who have experienced an added dose of hardship from the virus, especially those who have lost lives, their loved ones, their livelihood, their job, or their life savings. Be with us all to work together to heal each other and help us all move forward. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. May we increase the awareness of our own thoughts and feelings, our strengths and our fears, as we explore the impact of ingrained oppression of people of different color and culture. Help us to be open to looking at our histories with new eyes so that we can transcend the evils of the past and be free to enjoy the kaleidoscope of diversity, which is God's gift to us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Pour out your spirit and truth upon our national leaders and the leaders of the world that they may seek cooperative ways that bring peace and opportunity to all people work together for the reconciliation with their enemies, and execute fairness and righteousness for all people. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Even in the wilderness, you are with us. Be with the homeless and the poor. Walk alongside migrants and refugees crossing dangerous lands. Tend to those who live, whose lives feel desolate. Give healing and strength to all who suffer especially Reed Michael Bollinger, Robert Boyd and his family at his passing. 
William Hendrick and his family at his passing, Carl Gerber, William Krenz and his family at his passing, George Martell, Albert Poor and his family at his passing, Rita Sims, Kathy White, and Fred P. Geyser. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Deepen our prayer life in this time of Lent, that with quiet minds and hearts we may come to experience anew the love and hope flowing from your Son's wounded side. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us go from this place knowing or believing in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and knowing that our life, our life depends on that because it's in him that we have hope and through our faith that we have hope in the love and grace that Jesus promises and help us to share that in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We care as friends, we love as family, we serve as Christ. Thank you.